All right. Well, thank you so much, everyone, for being here again. We will go ahead and get started. Um, and I will be sharing my screen. All right. So today we have a wonderful family leadership group brought to you by Oakland Promise Kindergarten to College and Operation Hope. Um, we um, ask that you really mind a couple of things today on Zoom. So one, if you've already joined the call, if you, if you can please make sure to mute yourself. And then if you're comfortable with it, start your video, that way we can see you. And then really more importantly, make sure that you're engaging with us in the chat. This is how uh, we will be able to really make sure that we're answering your questions and making this session as useful as possible for you. Um, language interpretation will be available as needed in the chat um, and then throughout follow-up if you need it as well. Um, and then just a couple of things, who's in the room? So we have our Oakland Promise Kindergarten college, to college team. I am Rene Galvez, your program coordinator. We have Mario Valadez, who is also our program associate, Sophie Netter, and also in attendance from our team, Stephanie Allen and our program director, Vina Pulowski. And then our wonderful, wonderful financial well-being coach from Operation Hope, Monique White. And then what we'll really be covering today, and I'm sure Ms. Monique White will give you a, a lot more detail when she reviews her presentation, is uh, we'll be reviewing credit, debt, credit management, and really just different options that uh, Operation Hope can uh, help you with. And then um, on the K2C end, we will be reviewing college savings accounts and upcoming family leadership leadership group dates and then we will be asking you to share your thoughts with us in a survey that way we can raffle off three $25 target gift cards and now I will hand it over to Monique. Thank you Renee for that introduction. Hello guys my name is Monique White and I am a financial well-being coach at Operation Hope also located in Oakland. I'm really excited to be here and share what we do as an organization. This is just additional resources for you guys to take advantage of. It's free um, and it really goes hand in hand with budgeting, credit money management, um, I'm sorry, budgeting and um, money management. So if you're trying to get your budget in order and save for college and personal savings, usually you're typically working on your credit as well. So we're gonna go ahead and jump into it. Um, let me go ahead and share my screen. All right, guys, really excited. So um, I am over the credit and money management program. Um, our goal is to get you to 700 credit score so that if you do apply for trade lines, home loans, student loans, things like that, you do get really good interest rates. So Operation Hope has been around for 28 years and we've helped people um, get into homes, get their credit score increased, start in businesses. Um, we've helped youth with over a million youth with financial literacy we do offer um, mentorships, um, entrepreneurship training, um, budgeting, even savings at that age. So um, this is a really good resource to take advantage of. It is free. And like I said, we're partnering with um, Oakland Promise. So please take advantage of it. We are located throughout the country, which is a great thing. So if you guys have friends or family in other states, please provide this resource for them so that they can you know, focus on their budget and their credit as well. So you can give them this phone number, 888-388-4673, and then they can be connected to a coach in their local area. So during this workshop, uh, we will talk about understanding your credit, what makes up a credit score, um, and knowing your rights as a consumer and how to establish and rebuild your credit. 
we do offer other resources as well that's really important, especially during this pandemic, COVID-19. We do have uh, disaster preparedness and recovery, um, a program that can provide some resources if you have been affected by COVID-19. So you can get your credit report every 12 months for free at annualcreditreport.com. These are the three credit bureaus, Equifax, Experian, and TransUnion. I'm sure you've seen them before. And um, it's really important to check all three credit reports because sometimes uh, accounts do not report to all three. So you really wanna make sure that you're checking those. And like I say, you can get it for free um, at annualcreditreport.com. If you do want your FICO score, unfortunately, that would be an additional fee, but getting your report is free. I know there's a lot of um, different things out there where you can get your score, like Credit Karma, Credit Sesame, you might, your bank might provide that as well. So you can use those, but just know that you are entitled to a free report, so take advantage of that. At Operation Hope, like I said, our goal is to get you to 700. Um, so these are usually the credit tiers. The lowest credit score that you can get is 300 and the highest that you can get is 850. So if you've checked your credit report recently, you can kind of look to the left and see uh, what tier that you belong in. We try to get you to that green, that 700, so you can have good above average credit. We don't wanna work with you forever. We want you to have a good score. We want you to learn how credit works. We want you to get that education so that you know how to fix credit on your own and pass that information on to your, your kids and your family. We don't, we don't want you to have to pay someone to help you increase your credit. Also, like Renee said, if you guys have any questions, please put them into the chat and I can take some breaks and answer any questions that you guys have. So remember the lowest score you can get is 300 and the highest is 850. So this is really uh, the most important part in my opinion is just really understanding what makes up your credit score. There's a lot of uh, information out there, a lot of myths. So let's go ahead and debunk those. This is what makes up your credit score. So most importantly, the biggest factor is payment history. That's 35% of your score. The next biggest factor, 30%, is total debt utilization. And we'll talk about what that involves in a second. 15% of your score is length of credit history. And then 10% is account diversity and another 10% is new credit. So this is what makes up your credit score, you guys. So the biggest factor of your credit score is obviously your payment history. Are you paying on time? So your credit report includes information for the past seven years, good or bad. So they're looking to see what your, your payment history is. Have you been paying on time the past seven years? So they're looking at your past credit account. Um, they include payment history of all revolving and re installment debt. And it also includes public records and collection items. So um, there's gonna be details on late or missed payments. So there's always gonna be 30, 60, 90. That will always be on your credit report. So try to get that payment in before that 30 day, uh, that 30 day mark or it will affect your credit. And it also calculates how many accounts show no late payments. So if you feel like you've been working, you know, going, been going hard at your credit the past year, you're not really seeing too much change, please keep in mind that your credit report is the last seven years. So if you've had six years of bad payment history, well, that's going to affect, you know, the process of increasing your score. So you have to be really patient when it comes to this. Credit can be very unforgiving. Um, so just try to establish those good habits, those good, those good patterns, and I promise it will catch up to your report as far as paying on time. The next biggest factor is 30%, that's amount old, and this is for your um, revolving debt. So an example of revolving debt would be credit cards or lines of credit. 
So it's money that you can pay into and keep using, pay into and keep using. So if you get a $500 credit card, you can use it, make the payment and use it again, as opposed to an installment loan, like an auto loan, where they give you a large amount of money, you make your payment, you pay it off and that's it. So the rule of thumb for your credit cards or your lines of credit is that you don't wanna use more than 30% of your available credit. So if you add all your credit cards up, your credit limits up and it comes out to $500, you don't wanna use more than 30%, so that would be $150. So like I said, they're taking into consideration the amount that you owe versus the amount that you're given. And you don't wanna go above the 30%. So if you need a quick fix, into increasing your credit score. I know it's easier said than done, but go ahead and get those credit cards paid down. And creating a budget is definitely going to help you with that. Length of uh, credit history is 15% of your score. So they're looking at how long your credit accounts have been open, the age of your oldest account, the average age of all your accounts, um, there's always going to be specific details of um, how long those accounts have been open, and then um, it's going to tell you how long it's been since you've used certain accounts. So sometimes if you don't use your credit card for, let's say, it really depends on the company, but if you don't use your credit card within a certain time limit, they can unfortunately shut that down, and that will affect your credit history. So this is also something that you have to be patient with. Your credit history does not start when you turn 18, it when, it's when you open your first trade line. So that's 15% of your score. You really have no control over that. Um, but you just wanna make sure that when you open an account, you keep it open. You don't wanna always um, open something up and then close it because that will affect your score. New credit is 10%. Um, so they're looking at how many of your accounts are new. So if you check your credit report, um, you're going to see a section called inquiries. Those are credit checks. So every time you apply for a new credit card or you even get your credit checked for a new phone line or anything like that, that will that's um, called a, a hard inquiry, and that will show on your credit report. The rule of thumb for that is that you don't want to have more than six credit checks on your report. If you go above that threshold, you will start seeing your score being affected. So those fall off every two years. So you want to make sure you know you got your budget in order, you're paying down your debt, um, your score is going up, you're going to start getting all these credit card offers and all those types of things. You want to make sure you don't go credit happy and constantly apply for new credit. And this is really important too, if you have bad credit, you might be in a situation where you feel like you need to try to get a, a quick loan or um, something like that. And you're just constantly applying for places and you're getting denied. You're not gonna get those points back. So that can really affect your score. So they're looking to see how many times you've requested credit. And they're also looking at how long since inquiries were made by your lenders. And if after past payment problems, you've had good recent payment history. So if you apply for that loan, you get approved, are you going to pay on time or are you going to default? So that's 10% of your score. The types of credit that you will see being reported to your report are credit cards, uh, lines of credit, personal lines of credit, mortgage, student loans, car payments, and personal loans. So sometimes people can often get confused about what's going to be on your credit report. Um, so this, this is what will be on there. A lot of people think their utilities or rent will be on there. And sometimes that can be an option um, through your building or your landlord, but typically these are the accounts that you will see on there. Now, when it comes to checking accounts, um, typically those are not being reported, but if you do default, um, that could be on there as well. So if you um, overspend on your, on your checking account, you have a negative balance and you don't pay that off, that could be on there.
when you're establishing and rebuilding your credit, there's some things that you're, you need to start setting into place. And um, once your credit score starts to increase, unfortunately, you do become a target. Um, as you guys know, there are people that dedicate their lives to hacking, right? So if your score is going up, they're going to want your information to use it. So it's really important to protect yourself against identity theft. So one thing that you can do is start setting alerts on your credit cards or your checking accounts, your savings accounts. So if uh, there's any transactions, you can get notified, especially if it's um, within a certain amount. So if you know you're not really a big spender, so if something is over $300, you wanna get alerted. Or if someone checks your credit report, you wanna get alerted. Those are the type of things you should set into place. When you're rebuilding your credit too, you also want to make sure you're disputing inaccurate information. Those little things could really be hurting your score, whether it be the name, uh, the way your last name is spelled. You want to make sure you're looking at the date of birth. There might even be some accounts, um, collections, things like that that do not belong to you that have defaulted. And it's affecting your score, so you want to make sure you get those disputed. Also, if you're rebuilding your credit, you also want to make sure you start settling some accounts. So although your score is very important, you want to focus on the health of your report and start getting those balances down to zero. So you need to do that by prioritizing which debt to pay off first and by creating a monthly budget, you'll be able to do that. And that's something that we do at Operation Hope. We could sit down with you, create a monthly budget, put those things in like personal savings, emergency savings, college savings, and your debt. One thing that you can um, do to help rebuild your credit is to clear up any public records that could be affecting your credit. So they could be tax liens, um, child support, um, any uh, government, anything that involves the government where they want their money, that might be as listed as a public record, any lawsuits, things like that, that could really affect your credit as well as the decision when it comes to like renting, buying a house or being approved for a loan. It's really important, like I said earlier, to not close any accounts because that could really affect your, your credit history. You want to start paying off closed accounts with balances so that they don't go to collection. And if you're rebuilding your credit, you might want to open something called a secured credit card. Let me actually get out of this. So you might want to open something called a secured credit card where you put a deposit down um, and that will be your credit limit. So based on your credit score, um, they might say, okay, we need to see that you're trustworthy, so we need you to put two to $300 down. That will be your credit limit, and you'll borrow against it each month. And once they see that you are responsible with that credit card, they could give you your deposit back or increase your limit. Um, one thing that I really love is um, Self-Help Credit Union. They do offer some credit building products. Um, they have the credit building loan and secured credit card. Um, you can start off by establishing a rapport with them by opening up a checking account and a savings account. So they can already see that you have that relationship with them and you should go ahead and open up um, a savings account with them. So savings account is important for your budget, for your future, for saving for college. Um, so Renee, um, you wanna go ahead and jump in and talk about what you guys offer? Absolutely. Thank you, Monique. Um, and before we get started, I just wanted to open up this opportunity for any questions. If anyone had any questions um, about anything that Monique just presented now would be a fantastic time for you to ask them. And I know we also have some folks here um, that do need Spanish interpretation and have been following along in English. So, uh, si ustedes quisieran hacer unas preguntas sobre uh, lo que nos ha presentado nuestra uh, presentante Monique, ahorita sería un buen tiempo para hacer eso, aunque no tenemos la opción de hacerlo en español en este momento.
Okay. Um, it sound, looks like we don't have any questions, so I will go ahead and get started. Um, thank you again, everyone, for being here. I love that people have been coming into our meeting. Uh, whether it was on time or a little bit late, we really reward and recognize that you are here, especially during Parent Teacher Conference Week. Um, so, eh, let's see what's going on. All right. Um, so, in addition to working on your credit, establishing a really good credit score, and um, thinking about your future, we're here to really talk about why should you save, not just for college, but why should you save for a post-secondary um, dream, or why should you even start thinking about your child's future in that way? And there are a couple of reasons that we'd like to share with you. And First and foremost, it's because it's free. Kindergarten to college is really here uh, in collaboration with two banks. One is My529, and then the other one is a wonderful partner of Operation Hope and ours, and that's Self Help Federal Credit Union. And both of these banks allow us to open up these college savings accounts for students for free on your end. And as long as you do that, we'll give you $50 and you'll also have another opportunity to earn a little bit more money. Um, also, we know through lots of research as college savings account programs have grown throughout the state and throughout the country, that children who save at least $499 or about $500 um, while they are in school are four times more likely to enroll in college. Um, also, more importantly, as people save and families save for post-secondary and for college, that really limits the amount of loans that your child and student is going to have to borrow and take out for college, which will make a huge, huge difference after they graduate. Um, also, through tons of research, we do know that saving for college will boost your child's uh, academic achievement. And Truly, this does not negatively impact the financial aid package that will be offered to your child after filling out FAFSA when they apply for college opportunities. And so I know I just said a lot, so you might be thinking, well, what is a college savings account or what is a CSA? Kindergarten to college really refers to these college savings accounts as CSAs, and that can be a little bit confusing. But really what that means, it is it is a college savings account. That is a long-term savings or investment account that is for an individual that is zero through 18 years old. That account, as long and as soon as you open it, will grow in interest over time. So that means the account will grow in money or with money, right? And usually these accounts are used for post-secondary education. So that is four-year colleges, um, career technical, um, I'm sorry, career technical education, or in some cases, people do decide to use it to finance private education. Um, so here at K2C, these are the two banking partners that I mentioned to you earlier. And both of these options are for everyone, for all of our partners within Oakland Promise Kindergarten to College Schools. So both banks um, have different requirements. However, both are eligible for you to receive $50 for free as soon as you open the account and an additional $50 if you're able to make some contributions. So it really doesn't require any money for you to sign up for the account and it will start growing in interest. Um, the two different banks that we have really cater to different, um, different families, right? Some families are able to provide us with a social security number or an ITIN number. That really makes it eligible for them to use the My529 option. And then families that are not able to share a social security or ITIN number uh, really benefit from using the Self-Help Federal Credit Union branch. They have several locations here in the East Bay. We really partner with the West Oakland branch that's located on 7th Street right across from BART. So it has wonderful access for our families. Um, and then there's also one in Hayward and in the Mission, which is also accessible by BART. And 
I mentioned to you earlier that really these accounts are important because they will grow over time. And I know that this visual might not be the easiest to, to truly see, but what the idea is here is that um, starting on the very bottom corner where it really doesn't look like you have any money, it, you see that this graph indicates growth, right? Your money is growing over time. Um, and oops, I don't know why I can't click. Just a second. Okay, so what does that actually look like if you're making deposits into these 529 accounts? Even if you decided that you are not able to put any money into this account because maybe you haven't budgeted for that yet in your month, that's fine. As long as you have already opened this account with kindergarten to college, it will grow. And by and not by a lot, but it still does. And by the time your child graduates 12th grade, it will have around $203. Let's say you're able to put away $5 a month. By the time they graduate, they will have $1,303. If you're able to deposit $10 a month, your child will have $2,403. And if you are able to deposit $50, your child will have $11,204. So really the idea is that all these, although these accounts are um, invest long-term investment accounts and they may change, it is just proof and known that these accounts will grow over time and you will have more money than when you started with. Um, so kindergarten to college really is here to help you sign up for these CSAs. And during this virtual world, we do need laptops. So I'm going to tell you a couple of things that you do need. Um, you'll need computer access. So it is possible to do it on your cell phone. However, it's a lot easier to do it on your computer. The other really important thing that you'll need in order to sign up for a college savings account is a working email address. In either case, both of these banks are going to be contacting you and you will need to confirm your submission of your application in that way. So um, it's remain, you know, so it remains secure and, and uh, confidential. Um, so now let's talk about how to actually sign up for your My 529 college savings account. Well, you really should start by gathering all of your financial information or, or I'm sorry, uh, your personal, personal information. So that's for you as the adult and for your child or for whomever you are signing the account up for. So let's say you are a grandparent. You could, if you had the family permission, sign up for your grandchild, right? You will need the social security numbers, birth dates, accurate addresses, because you do have the option to receive um, a certificate in the mail, as well as quarterly statements. Uh, in order to get started with this, you do need to, like I mentioned, use that computer, use that internet, visit either two of these links. We have one bit.ly link that is like a www, but it's just a little different, or you can visit our Oakland Promise um, website and navigate the application through there. Um, you must complete all of the required fields in the application to get to the very end, which is the enrollment survey. So that's the part that you need to complete in order to let kindergarten to college, or K to C, that's S, in order to let us know that, hey, I've signed up my child for this account, and we will be able to deposit the $50 of incentive money into that account. So the reason why I'm going to be showing you these two images is because it's very important that you um, follow our kindergarten to college official sign up with My529. You are able to sign up independently with My529, um, but it makes it a whole lot easier on our end to um, get notified. So we make sure to deposit that $50 into your account. When you get to that um, application, portal, right, you will see that the application is broken down on one side, on the left side, kind of like a checklist. As you complete the application, those boxes will turn blue. Um, once you finish that, once you submit this application, there's going to be a little button where you click confirm. As soon as you click that, uh, you will fill out uh, an enrollment survey that lets us know hey, I signed up for the account and we can deposit the money. Um, this is 
the image that you will see if you log on to the official My529 website. This is not the kindergarten to college um, facilitated process. So make sure that it looks like this with a checklist on the left, not like this. And um, I'm really excited to share with you that signing up for a self-help federal credit account is a little bit different than the process with My529. I'm not going to go into depth uh, on that because it's a pretty specific process. And in order to complete that process, we're going to ask that you contact a kindergarten to college representative. However, there are a couple of things that will help you get started with that process. Um, one, remember that's the option where you do not need a social security or an ITIN number. What you will need is a government issued ID and a proof of address if that ID does not have um, a proof of address. And again, you in this case will make sure to fill out that enrollment form that lets us know at k to c that we can go ahead and deposit that $50 into your account for opening a college savings account for your child. Um, that was a lot of information. Are there questions about any of that? And I'll check the chat. Okay, looks like maybe not. So I will keep going. I wanted to share with you um, our next family leadership group date. So our next FLG. Here at K2C, we like to shorten our names. So family leadership group is FLG, kindergarten to college is K2C. But this next session that we will be having with you is on December 3rd. And we really hope that you're able to spread the word with your family. If you know that you have students that are also in seventh and eighth grade or um, even sixth grade, right? This is gonna be a really, really great opportunity to start getting them excited for high school. Uh, what we're going to be covering that day is um, the Oakland Unified Pathways and Academy. So the different high schools and options that students can attend uh, within OUSD. Um, this is just a quick glance of what those are if you haven't seen them. We have lots of different um, academies. Uh, we have different, we have the environmental science academies, we have architecture and design, we have social justice and reform pathways, many, many different options that your um, children can enjoy and learn about. Um, also, we'll be sharing the a survey with you so you can kind of tell us your thoughts throughout the um, you know about this presentation and on that survey you'll be able to indicate with us whether you want to receive a copy of what this family leadership group calendar is or FLG calendar is and on this calendar you'll see the date the title of our workshop um, or meeting and you'll have the link for the zoom call and then a quick description of what the event actually is. Um, so now that we've shared all this information with you we want to drop in the chat a survey with you uh, for you to complete. And as soon as you complete the survey, we will be sharing our screen so that you can see us um, raffle and announce our $325 target or our three twenty-five dollar target gift card winners. Um, and I will stop sharing for just a moment. Okay, and the chat is now live with our survey. So we have it both in Spanish and in English. So please go ahead and click on that. And I will set the timer for um, about three minutes to see, I think that might be enough time. If not, you can go ahead and let us know. And then we will announce our winners. Um, en el chat hemos dejado el enlace para que ustedes puedan hacer clic y darnos sus opiniones, comentarios y pensamientos sobre esta presentación. 
uh, voy a poner un tiempo para tres minutos. Ustedes pueden indicar si necesitan más tiempo, pero al final de eso vamos a anunciar los tres ganadores de las tarjetas de 25 dólares de Target. Así es que suerte todos. Good luck, everyone. about a minute and a half left everyone. And that is our time. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and hand the screen over virtually to my wonderful colleague, Sophie, who is going to spin the wheel for us. All right. Woohoo. So let me share my computer screen. All right. Can everyone see their names here? And we're doing it um, three times, right, Renee? Okay, let's start the first one. All right, so our first winner. <laughs> Ray Garcia. Congratulations, you are our first winner. Okay, and the second winner. Oh no, <laughs> the same time, the same name. Okay, that's not good, let's see. 
Ray, I'm going to have to take off your name for this one, or else you might win three times. <laughs> All right, let's do it again. All right, our next winner. Marcel George. <laughs> All right, and our last winner. Let's see. Elena Lopez. Woohoo! <laughs> All right, congratulations to all the winners. I'll hand it back to you, Renee. Awesome, thank you. Congratulations, everyone. Um, we are so excited that you were here with us and we hope that you were able to learn something that you can apply to your budgeting, to your financial life, as well as start thinking about your child's future. Um, and Really, that's it for us. We really hope that you have um, a safe evening and stay safe. And thank you again for joining us.